Three foot worms in the stomach. Bitten off heads. Chemical attacks. Stealing. Cannibalism. And finally, death by hypothermia. This is all just part of the nightmarish life of a praying mantis. Let's check it out. Well, let's start perhaps with worms. There are many strange examples in nature of how parasites manipulate their hosts, causing them to change their behavior to be more beneficial to the parasites. One such example is the praying mantis and the strange worm that emerges from it. Researchers have found that the parasite, called a hair worm, causes its host to jump into bodies of water. And there's a pretty simple logic to it. Hair worms begin their lives in rivers and ponds from where their larvae enter the bodies of aquatic insects. These insect hosts then grow wings and emerge from the water where predators, such as mantises, await them. If a mantis eats an infected insect, the hair worm will begin to grow and mature inside its body. But the mantis is not the final stop for the parasite. To start reproducing, hair worms should return to the water, and mantises aren't big fans of bathing, so they have to resort to manipulation. For a long time, it was unclear how the hair worms managed to pull this off, but recently scientists got an interesting idea. It seems that the parasites make it so that mantises start to get attracted to the polarization of reflected light. I won't go into too much detail. Let me just say that light reflected from water is mostly horizontally polarized. Insects know how to recognize this so they can find water or avoid it, as in the case of uninfected praying mantises. But hairworms probably somehow achieve the opposite effect. By the way, hairworms don't specialize in praying mantises. They can infect other insects as well. They don't seem to care at all, as long as they get back into the pond. This is going to sound sad and even a little gross, but infected hosts that jump into the water become a very important seasonal source of energy for aquatic predators. That's classic wildfire for you, even nasty parasites might come in handy. Let's be honest, when people talk about praying mantises, the first thing that pops into their heads is the whole head-biting thing. And yeah, when male mantises try to woo the females, it can get pretty dangerous. You see, the females have this habit of nipping off the males' heads and munching on other body parts after they're done. It doesn't happen every single time, but it's common enough that any male hanging around a female mantis is taking a big risk. And it doesn't even have to be an attempt to mate. Sometimes females eat males just for fun because the males are smaller and weaker. In fact, among the species that exhibit cannibalism of their mates, studies have shown that the females make a meal out of the males between just 13 and 28 percent of the time. It's just a question of which males are the unlucky ones. Especially since sometimes females eat more than one male. Here we have three males trying to mate at once. One has already lost his head, the other two are on their way. Yes, the observer actually confirmed that the other two males had been eaten. The fate of the previous victims didn't discourage any new ones from coming forward. You might think this is pretty stupid and the cannibal species should drop out of the evolutionary race very quickly, but as with parasites, there's a benefit to the death of males. When female mantises eat their partners, they get important amino acids, which are then added to the eggs they lay. Plus, females apparently lay twice as many eggs after eating a male than normal. Well, now you know why females bite off the heads of males. As I was saying, females have the habit of eating males separately from the whole mating thing, and occasionally the female gets a bit impatient and starts the meal before mating. But guess what? The male doesn't mind at all. The male mantis body keeps moving without its head, seemingly on autopilot, and it can still fertilize the female. Surprisingly, this happens because nerves in the abdomen take control. Some experts jokingly refer to them as headless horsemen. It just goes to show how determined mantises are in ensuring their species survives. Not even the lack of a head stops them. The truth is, male mantises hardly give up anything because their lifespan isn't that long to begin with. As the breeding season gets closer to fall, mantises really struggle with the cold weather. Females also don't live too long, they die a couple of days after laying eggs. This happens either because of the cold or because of exhaustion. After all, laying eggs takes up almost all the female's energy, leaving her with nothing for herself. Once the breeding season wraps up, only the eggs make it through. She carefully lays them in a tough, foamy clump, shielding them from the cold. Then come spring, the little mantises hatch, and the whole cycle begins anew.
However, when you're a mantis, it's not only the female of your species that might make you lose your head. Sometimes the reason can be your own prey. Mantises are relentless hunters, going after any insect within reach. But what appears to be a harmless dinner could spell imminent doom. The mantis has caught an ant and is devouring it, not even realizing that the dying body in its clutches is emitting loud chemical signals. The ant family is on its way. Hundreds of ants run to the rescue, and the mantis, by the way, a formidable predator, suddenly becomes prey. The ants are well aware of the danger, so they stick to tactics that work only against the mantis. One soldier ant grabs the mandibles of the mantis so that it can't harm anyone, and at the same time, the rest of the army surrounds the mantis from all sides. First, their mandibles take off the mantis' head, then when it's no longer a threat, they take it apart to carry it back to the colony one piece at a time. Why waste the good stuff? Anyway, he had it coming. Mantises can't escape the risks posed by their own prey. When you've got only spring through the end of fall to live your life, you can't waste a moment. You gotta make the most of every chance Mother Nature throws your way. Mantises eat birds, fish, and mostly insects, but there's one prey they should steer clear of completely. Bombardier beetles. This. These insects can release toxic chemicals at 212 degrees Fahrenheit from the tip of their abdomen, bombing the attacker. When a mantis sees a bombardier beetle, it doesn't expect any defensive features. It looks like a beetle, which means it can be attacked. Except that after the first attack, the predator immediately retreats. Studies indicate that mantises easily catch beetles using their front legs, but immediately let them go afterward. The video clearly shows the mantises displaying signs of obvious discomfort, while we can't definitively claim they're in pain, recent research suggests that insects might be capable of experiencing pain, so it's up to you to come to the conclusions. Additionally, it was observed that all the mantises that grabbed the bombardier beetles would groom the body parts exposed to the chemicals afterward, almost like they were licking their wounds. Mantises are fantastic hunters, known for their remarkable accuracy and speed when capturing prey. Some people even liken them to the leopards of the insect world. Take a moment to imagine a mantis with the head of a leopard, or the other way around. Foraging food isn't a walk in the park even for praying mantises. Every bug they catch demands time and effort. Imagine if all that hard work goes to waste. It's like a little tragedy for these mantises. Remember, they only have less than a year to live, so there's no room for failure. That's why those pesky wasps are real troublemakers in the mantis world. They're the thieves. A lucky photographer in Germany captured an amazing video of an epic showdown between two insects. The mantis was just about to munch on a grasshopper it had snagged when it had to fend off an annoying wasp at the same time. The mantis had already chowed down half the grasshopper and was all set to finish its meal, but the wasp was too quick and agile. It swooped in, started munching from the other end, and then snatched the whole prey, flying away triumphantly. Just when you thought female mantises biting off heads, wasps stealing food, dealing with parasites, and enduring the cold were the worst of their problems, here's another one. Molting. It takes mantises about 5 to 10 molts to grow up, depending on the species. Even though it's a natural process and evolution's way of doing things, Molting is no walk in the park for mantises. In fact, it can be downright tough, and sometimes it even leads to death. This happens when the mantis fails to fully emerge from its old exoskeleton. Picture this. You live for a measly year, or maybe even less, and yet you risk kicking the bucket ten times, all because of your own body. Breeders even call it the biggest danger a praying mantis can encounter. This sounds terrible, but it's actually the price mantises have to pay for their deadliness. Have you ever seen them up close? A mantis's body is covered in tough, solid protective armor that's made up of chitin, the same material that protects crabs, for example. When it comes to mantises, they have chitin because it helps them avoid getting hurt while munching on their prey. When the mantis grows out of its old hard shell, it sheds it, which makes sense. A knight's armor can't grow along with him, can it? When insects molt, they become quite inactive and cling with their legs while wriggling in a rather odd manner. At this point, the most important thing for a mantis is not to fall, because a mantis that falls during molting is a dead mantis. The funny thing is that with all this, mantises have amazing regeneration power. When they're hungry, they can even munch on their own legs. I know, sounds kind of crazy, right? 
I mean, who would willingly give up their limbs? But there's a reason to their madness. Those legs are packed with nutrients just like any other prey they eat, and those nutrients are essential for their survival and procreation. Plus, the best part is the leg grows back as good as new before the next molt. I wonder though, do they feel any pain during this leg feast? Or can they somehow turn off their own senses? It'd be great if scientists could crack this mystery. By the way, remember when I compared manises to leopards? They're tough predators that will try to attack any insect that happens to be nearby. Young manises that haven't reached their full size are already considered fierce and dangerous even towards each other. As strange as it may sound, getting eaten by a female manis is kind of preferable because at least you've made it to adulthood, lived a full life, and probably had a shot at leaving some offspring behind. But truth be told, numerous manises never get that far, mainly because the little babies just can't resist going at each other. But even if a manis survives, escapes an attack, or attacks itself, there may always be a bigger manis around. Size doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter when it comes to manises getting ready to rumble or scaring off enemies. A bunch of bug experts checked out 58 different manis species and came to this conclusion. You probably know that lots of animals act all tough to fend off predators. Well, manises are no different. Turns out that 31 species from the study did exactly that. Big or small, harmless looking or not, they were equally brave. Here's the thing, praying manises are always ready to defend themselves. And that's pretty fascinating. When it comes to animals, scaring others relies mainly on the loudness and intensity of their sounds. So having a spooky face alone won't do the trick. In simple terms, just being a manis isn't enough to frighten others, though manises don't seem to care about that. Manises versus Manises If you've been watching our channel long enough, you're aware that invasive species are not welcome by anyone. These guys are real troublemakers, messing with the local animals for food and bringing in new diseases. In short, they're a problem. But the most surprising part is how the invasive mantis species, Meomantis caffra, is affecting the native manises in New Zealand. It all started when the invasive manis arrived on the islands from South Africa in 1978. Well, what's the big deal, right? But after about 10 years, it became clear that wherever a new mantis arrived, the native species simply disappeared, and quite quickly. To figure out what was going on, scientists decided to bring representatives of both species together in the lab. They saw something totally unexpected. The new manises didn't snatch the food or kick the old ones out of their turf. Instead, the local males were strangely drawn to the invasive females. But here's the catch. These new females were way more aggressive compared to the local ones, so a whopping 70% of the love-struck males ended up as a snack, which is way too high. In comparison, native females eat males only 40% of the time. The situation poses a problem because all that vital energy we talked about earlier is now being channeled into the other species' survival. The local females aren't getting any action, so it's no surprise they're on the brink of extinction. Impaling Species Manises are well known as skillful, formidable, and successful hunters. But a new species discovered in Peru a few years ago has added another skill to its arsenal, impaling prey with special barbs on its front legs. According to the researchers, this is a new hunting strategy that's never been observed before in manises or any other insect. Moreover, scientists weren't even looking for this ability, simply because they didn't know it was there. They discovered this way of hunting by accident. They just got a close look at the hunting process and suddenly realized it was different. 3D Mantis Glasses What else don't scientists know about mantises? Well, for example, how effectively they use their vision when they hunt and how they see in general. To help people see the world through the eyes of an insect, scientists gave mantises 3D glasses. Of course, they couldn't put them on that easily, so they used beeswax to attach two separate 0.3-inch blue and green lenses. So it turns out that when manises didn't wear the glasses, they didn't go after the 2D prey. But as soon as they put on the glasses, they went for it. In a nutshell, we now know that manises see in 3D just like us humans. And it seems like they might even enjoy going to the movies. The Smell of Fear According to a recent study, fear alone can lead to the extinction of animal populations. Scientists found that fear of predators causes flies to spend less time eating, mate, and produce fewer offspring. Well, that makes sense. When you're always afraid, you don't feel like doing the usual stuff. 
They decided to test fear response by using the scent of a praying mantis. And guess what? When they exposed small groups of fruit flies to this smell, the risk of their population dying out shot up by seven times. Yes, seven times. Even if the predator was briefly shown and then hidden away, its smell alone made the fruit fly population continue to drop. Luckily, not all animals are affected like this. But seriously, fruit flies can be such a bother that having a few mantises around wouldn't hurt. If you know where to order them, let me know in the comments. See you later.